It's Tuesday, January 15th, 2019, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. On Barnstable today, we learn about spray paint tagging with Chief Sonneman, get an update on unemployment on the Cape and Islands with Mass Hire, and find out more about the mission of the Disability Commission. First up, municipal and community news and notes. The long-awaited repair of storm-related erosion damage at Blish Point in Barnstable is scheduled to start Wednesday, January 16th at 7 a.m. Repair work will focus on replacing sand along the dune area northwest of the Millway Beach parking area. Materials and equipment will be staged temporarily in the parking lot for the Blish Point boat ramp while the, road is, while the work is ongoing. Vehicle access to the Blish Point boat ramp and parking lot will be maintained during the construction operations. However, a portion of the parking lot will be sectioned off for delivery and offloading of replacement sand, staging of materials, and operation equipment. Users of the boat ramp are advised to use extreme caution while using the facilities. The project is expected to be completed by Friday, February 1st, weather permitting. Last week, Barnstable detectives arrested an individual for tagging, the urban name for spray paint graffiti on buildings and structures. Chief Sonneman joins us in studio to explain what this mis misdemeanor is and how the individual was apprehended. It may look like art, but it's illegal. It's called tagging. With me today, Chief Sonneman. Good morning. How good are you? Good morning. How are you? Pretty good. Yourself? That's good. Um, so last week, mm -hmm. uh, there was an arrest after uh, an investigation in mm -hmm. tagging. Mm -hmm. And the word tagging sounds kind of strange. And let's kind of quantify for people, what is tagging? Well, it's, it's really, um, I want to say it's a newer crime. It's been around for a little while. But the original crime it really came out of was defacement of property. And, you know, people who were like spray painting, damaging, defacing property in general, you know, maliciously or intentionally just to damage it. Um, that was the original crime and it was a felony. Uh, but as, you know, gangs really got into more marking their territory with spray paint and other people got into doing uh, vandalism in that regard, spray paint, stickers, more specifically um, to like mark a property or it was thematic, it was one specific type of um, marking they were doing, police caught up with that and said, you know, this isn't a person out there that's just necessarily just damaging property just to damage it or being malicious necessarily. It's more of this person is marking this property in a certain way or a certain manner and is marking all these different places in the same way. So originally it came up about gangs to like prevent gangs, keep them from marking property and all this other stuff, but you brought up before we get on the air, the, that artist Banksy who goes around and, and there are a number of other artists that are out there that actually do it, but that is also essentially tagging because it's one thematic approach. And in this case, this individual was marking that BLSD, meaning blessed. And that's what they, he did over 30 or 35 different properties. Wow. It was the same marking. So there it's tagging. And what tagging is, um, is a misdemeanor crime it's punishable by up to two years in jail or a $1,500 fine. But the person, if they're found guilty, is also responsible for cleaning up the mess that they made. So they have to go and restore the property that they made. But like I said, it's where one instance, one person may take a baseball bat and smash up a property or spray paint it, but then they move on to another property. It, it might be a different spray paint or a different way they damage the property, although it may be the same person. These people, when they tag, it's the same kind of thing. They have a signature. It's okay. a message that's being sent. Okay. So that's why they came up with that law. Okay. So that makes a little bit more sense than, you mm -hmm. know, tag your it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe that's it. <laughs> well, maybe that is it. Um, you know, from, from my days back in the 70s, the graffiti was done on old buildings mm -hmm. and might have been done on railroad cars mm -hmm. or railroad bridges. Mm -hmm. We saw a lot of that growing up. Yep. But now it seems to be more of a messaging type of Mm -hmm. uh, crime rather than a uh, just a, you know I want a free expression it, kind of thing. Well, you know, and I don't know. It's, it still falls under the category of tagging in certain circumstances right. because they're sending a message. It's a certain thing, and like I said, it's thematic. They're signing it. There's a signature. They have a different. You know, it's it's all fits into like one little pattern for the different people that are doing it, as opposed to someone who goes out just randomly and damages some property or even spray paints it. Right. 
it changes. It's not something they're keeping up. These people, like this individual instance, 30 or 35 different properties, was all the same thing. Right. You know, and it's done for people to see. So let's talk about uh, a little bit about how Barnstable Police is catching up with these kinds of individuals. Um, mm -hmm. They don't do it out in the open. <laughs> no, no, they don't. They don't. It seems to be like, you know, are they there with a flashlight kind of thing and they're doing it at night? Uh, there seems to be a lot of tools that they have to carry well, with them too. They're obviously doing it in times when people aren't observing them do it. But even in those times, there are, believe it or not, there are witnesses out there to different things. And so when you're investigating these things, that you get out there and you knock on doors. A lot of it is, you know, just the same old follow-up. And a lot of this initiated with a specific officer, Travis Brown, was noticing some of these things and started following up on some of these cases and found, you know, a couple of different people that may have seen things. And the detective pick it, detectives pick it up. They try going around to different different places where they sell paint. Hey, have you noticed people buying certain types and all this other stuff? So um, then they hit this, you know, the social media. You know, look for the tagging because, believe it or not, a lot of these people like to brag. So maybe they've posted it online, and if you're searching for this stuff, it pops up. Um, the other thing is, there are video cameras everywhere nowadays, and so a lot of times um, you go back and you just look around an area. You know, a bank or a store or an ATM or even the town may have cameras in an area. And although it being at night in low light, they may not provide you with um, a good picture of the person, per se. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But it also it does give you a time frame with which to work. So now you can narrow down, oh, when is this person out? When is this person, what kind of we what, what's the weather conditions? What's the lighting conditions? Um, also, it identifies maybe areas they've touched. Are they wearing gloves? Are they not wearing gloves? Are their fingerprints available? Things like that. Okay. And we did... Uh Get our guy this past <laughs> week. Yes, so, we did. Yes, we um, did. You know those B L B L S D, and there's it's still an ongoing investigation. But you did get the guy. We did get the guy. I mean, it's ongoing in the fact it's still got to go to court. There's still follow-up things to do with it. And it was uh, Mr. Nicholas Tawatau, up 24 years old of Hyannis, was going out and doing it, and they did find stuff that tied him to the crime, and he did speak with the detectives about it. So we do. We do know who it is. We did identify the person, and it's just slated to go to court. And right. you know, hopefully that'll get done relatively quickly. He should have gone to art school. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> you know, missed his calling. <laughs> missed his calling. Well, that was a really great explanation of tagging. What should residents do if they notice something that like this in their neighborhood? Call us. You know, because you don't know what the reason is. Like I mentioned, in some of this could be, you know, some of this in different areas, different cities, well, it could be gang related. You go out there, it could just be someone who's, you know, a, a misdirected artist. Who knows what it might be, but the thing to do is to get out there and document it because over a period of time, you can start tracking this down and narrowing it down where these people are, what they're doing, and who's doing it. Excellent. But, Thanks. For, but you know, first of it, if you see something, say, say something. something. Give us a call. Excellent. Thanks, Chief. You're welcome. Mass Hire Cape and Islands, also known as Career Opportunities, has updated employment numbers and new branding. Executive Director David Agostino joins us in studio. Historic unemployment numbers with me today, David Agostino from Mass Hire. David, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Paul. Always good to see you. And historic unemployment uh, here that we've uh, experienced, even on Cape Cod, yeah, even I, in January, December. I'm somewhat dumbfounded. I mean, you know, you can only do so much. I, I, we'll talk about the November numbers. Those are the most recent ones. But right. uh, the Bonneville County, 3.5% unemployment. Uh, and that's down for 4% a year ago. I mean, that's November. I mean, you just right. can't go any lower. And, you know, Dukes County is at 4.3, and Nantucket's at 3.7. Uh, these are historically low unemployment numbers, and it, uh, it's great news for people who are looking for work. It's not great news for employers who, even during the winter now, are having trouble filling their positions. Right, and we're not talking, um, you know, high level positions. We're, we're talking, you know, all skill levels right down the ladder here is that everyone's looking for bodies. Absolutely. And, you know, I would say that for a lot of organizations, the high level positions are always difficult to fill right. in this area. Uh, you know, the banks always talk to me about their difficulty 
uh, about how they have to go off Cape for a lot of their uh, VP and above talent, and that, that hasn't changed. But uh, for entry-level positions, for carpenters, landscapers, you name it, our employers are struggling. Right. So what, does, uh, what are employers doing? There's some resources that they have through Mass Hire. Yes, of course, our Career Center works uh, with employers. And, and for a lot of positions, we're a, a pretty good source in that uh, one of the knocks on our system is that we tend to be uh, low end with uh, our uh, employees. And that's uh, somewhat true in that uh, a lot of the people who come to us are um, our uh, entry-level kind of people. We train people for uh, positions. So, um, so we can, but we also have people at all levels uh, who are looking for work. So uh, that's uh, a bit of a misnomer. But, uh, but we do uh, tend to do pretty well with entry-level positions. So we encourage employers to uh, check in with uh, New Mass Hire. Uh, you can just go to the website and, uh, I don't know, it used to be cape.com. Cavejobs.com. I don't right. know what the hell it is now. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's, you might be able to still get there. But right. um, as an employer, you can go on the website, you just register, and then you can have full access to all the services there. Someone will contact you and help you source employees to fill your jobs. Right. So, you know, we're talking uh, opportunity here on Cape Cod for employment. Uh, this past week was uh, a really cool event uh, that was uh, called Waterworks. It was all surrounded about the blue economy. Uh, Mass Hire was a, a sponsor of that uh, event. Yep. How did that go? Uh, it went pretty well. Uh, we had, uh, I would say there were at least 250 to 300 high school students who attended. And of course, this is uh, uh, piggybacking on our construction career day. It's the same type of event. Uh, just apply to the blue economy. So we have a, a bunch of uh, blue economy employers like Hydroy, Tel Teledyne Benthos, uh, McLean, and others uh, who are uh, speaking with high school students and educating them about the, the uh, jobs that are available in the blue economy. And that's something that we do all the time. It, uh, the official name for it is Career Exploration. Sure. Uh, we do that through our School to Careers program uh, quite a bit. And uh, it's exciting to have this kind of STEM-related activity in the blue water economy uh, being presented to students uh, for their uh, potential uh, employment. That and, and learning career paths, um, you know, what they can do in high school and early college to get through uh, into some of those uh, careers as well. Oh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it's all the way from... Uh, up to uh, marine engineering and in those areas uh, and uh, lots of stops in between uh, and and it's not all for high school uh, students uh, we have a ton of boatyards here on Cape Cod uh, on the eastern seaboard right. actually so in the uh, Massachusetts Rhode Island area there are a ton of jobs the decent jobs uh, for young people and uh, they're not as seasonal as they once were. Uh, there's a lot of year-round work in the marine industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so there's everything that uh, to meet individuals' needs, whether it be high school students or college graduates. Excellent. And while we're talking about mass hire, uh, so it was the Cape and Islands Workforce Development Group and then Investment. There, there's been some iterations of the name, but Mass Hire is the new branding. Came out this past fall. Um, how's that going? Is it uh, trying to make the inroads of well, getting people to understand who you are now? Yeah, yeah, because we have to get them to ununderstand what we were. I mean, especially for our career sense, career opportunities was well known throughout the region. Right. So it's difficult to get people to recognize Mass Hire. Cape and Islands uh, Career Center as the place now to go for their, uh, whether it's unemployment needs or um, job related needs. Uh, but we're making some inroads. It's, uh, it's not an easy transition, but uh, I, I'm very proud of our team here on the Cape. We, we bought in. I mean, the state said we were going to do this, so we didn't have much choice. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but we're really happy to, because, uh, you know, 
in the, the global sense, it makes a lot of sense to have the same nomenclature statewide so that businesses, wherever they are in the state, they know mass hire is a place that you can go to get uh, help for the businesses and their needs, but also now for individuals, it's the mass hire uh, logo. So, and we're now the mass hire workforce board. Uh, so it's uh, not a huge change for us, but uh, the logos change, the colors have changed, all that stuff. But uh, it, we're implementing, and uh, it's a bit of a slow process. The state, they actually did buy some billboards uh, recently. I saw uh, a, little, a few, uh, and that helps. But uh, I'm not sure they're making quite the investment that I would like to see them make in the new brand. I mean, yeah. uh, any company that uh, rebrands would spend a ton of money uh, through social media and other uh, communication me uh, media to be able to get people to recognize the new, new nomenclature. Yeah. So uh, I, I think there are, they could do a little more with that. Right. And we'll just reiterate that Mass Hire still has the same mission that you've always had as the Cape and Islands Workforce Development Group, right? I mean, it's the same mission. Ab absolutely. We haven't, that part hasn't changed a bit. Right. Uh, you know, uh, we have a board of directors of uh, s some 40 individuals, uh, the majority of whom are local business people who make decisions about how we invest the federal funds for job training in uh, education. So. Uh, we're happy that uh, th that part stayed the same. Um, it's just kind of the external stuff that changed. Excellent. Well, mass hire, right? You got <laughs> We're it. We're just going to keep saying it until it, it clicks with everybody. Yeah. Thanks so much for being with us again today, David. My pleasure. Good to see you, Paula. New this year on Principal Today, deep dive profiles on the town's boards, commissions, and committees. What do you know about the Barnstable Disability Commission? Chair of the Commission, Sabrina Kane, joins us to explain its mission and work. Everyone deserves a seat at the table or a chair at the game. With me today, Sabrina Kane, Chair of the Disability Commission here at the Town of Barnstable. Welcome to the show, Sabrina. Hi, Paula. Thank you for having me on your show. So there is a lot of things that we can talk about with the Disability Commission, yes. but first tell us a little bit about you and why you're on the Commission. Well, uh, I am an attorney in Hyannis. I practice elder law and special needs law, and a lot of my clients have accessibility issues, and so I thought that it, I would join the Disability Commission in order to be a part of the conversations that the town has about accessibility. That's fantastic. A lot of our uh, commissions and committees, um, you know, always need people. So today our conversation really is going to center around what does the Disability Commission do? We are an advisory commission to the town. Okay. What that means is that our purpose is to advise and guide the town of Barnstable and its residents regarding issues of accessibility uh, to be in conformance with the disability laws. Okay, and some of those laws um, are important just for getting to and from a place. It's not just parking, oh, yes. right? No, it's not just parking. Okay. Many uh, accessibility regulations have to do with the amount of space that somebody has to enter and exit a restroom, uh, egress and ingress uh, for a restaurant or other public spaces. There are a lot of regulations that cover how much space is needed for somebody who uh, has a mobility impairment uh, because uh, these issues are so important. There's just a lot of details. So. Right. There are a lot of details. And when you start to talk about regulations, it's hard to wade through those. Yes. You know, if you have an accessibility issue, um, the commission can sometimes help in looking to that business or exactly. help those business help those businesses understand what that issue might be. Precisely so. We are here uh, to advise private businesses about compliance with disability laws and our members have training about those laws. Okay. Mem many of our members go to uh, training offered by the Massachusetts Office on Disability uh, at least a couple times a year we have one or two members go um, and they tell me uh, that it's just very enriching and that it really helps them understand what's going on uh, and we have 
a handful of members in the commission who've been on for several years and they're very well versed in these requirements and also uh, they are very interested in helping private business owners uh, uh, understand what's required and we try to be as helpful as we can that's and available that's <laughs> that's good news to businesses because wading through some of that information um, one of it's in legalese and regulations are yes. never easy to read mm -hmm. so true uh, our planning and development committee can tell us that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but some of the accomplishments that have been um, uh, affected by what your work is doing. So you've been around for quite a while here in the town of Barnstable. Yes, the commission has many, many years. Many years. And some of the uh, things that people don't really think about is restrooms at the beach. So you've actually helped. Yes, we, we do. We, we fund portable accessible restrooms yeah. um, for the beach. I think this past fiscal year we funded uh, portable accessible restrooms for Covels Beach, Sloop Beach, and South Cape Cod. Okay. And what are some of the other accomplishments that you think that are important that the public should know that if, that the Disability Commission has um, uh, helped, you know, the town of Barnstable uh, accomplish? One of the m more touching ones in my experience is the renovations that were made to the Enoch Cobb Learning Center where uh, we funded uh, renovations in order to make the playground accessibility compliant for disabled uh, preschoolers. Oh, that is wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> We're very proud of that. The, the playground is amazing right. for anybody who has a chance to visit. Wow, that is great. And then the Cape Cod Challenger Club, too, um, that's a baseball program? but That we have funded, yes. That you funded, so, so kids who have accessibility or disability challenges can play baseball. Correct, yeah. Right? Because yeah. they're kids. Yes. <laughs> and then what caught my eye about the commission was um, three projects that uh, came out in a press release just recently. Mm -hmm. One was the C Street Cafe in Hyannis. Yes, those, uh, those renovations were very, uh, regarding I think the, the handicap area, the, the par parking, mm -hmm. uh, that was onerous for the owner, but because he was committed to accessibility, he took that on and was very responsive. Right. It's a tight little parking lot, and there mm -hmm. wasn't any way that somebody with a wheelchair could get out of a vehicle in that parking lot. Uh, that's my understanding, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other one was the our own Hyannis Youth and Community Center um, is the earliest stages of design phase. That whole project was designed for accessibility. That was amazing. Their commitment was outstanding. Right. It's just, you know, when you think about a community center, mm -hmm. well, yes. the community involves everybody, right? Yes, yes. Exactly. And then Lowell Park in Katuit, um, they basically have a an area as well that people can watch baseball. Yes, yes. And they were so, that, the owners were so committed to making that area accessibility compliant and access for all was such a commitment. We're just so pleased uh, right. with the results there. That was a decades long effort. And well, at least more than a decade. <laughs> it seems like some of these projects are very long. Part of it is is that they have to come through and make sure that yes. they're doing the regulations. Yes. But two, some of these, uh, uh, I guess, construction or things that people are doing take time. They do. And this is why we always recommend that business owners, when they're making a renovation, contact us up front uh, oh. uh, because it is so much easier to have a building that's accessibility compliant when that's part of the uh, initial plan, when it's in the blueprints, and not later when you find out that you're in violation and you have to fix something and that's, you, know, you have to redo construction that you've already ac accomplished. Right, yeah. So we always try to get, get it early if we can. And then parking violations. So yes. this always seems to be like the trigger that people think about handicap spots yes, or yes. disability or accessibility is parking. The, our parking division here at the town of Barnstable takes this very seriously. They, they do and they're a great resource and they will explain the policy behind when a ticket might be forgiven and when it can't be and, and it would just, uh, you're really uh, I would direct you to the Barnstable Parking Division for those rules. 
Right, um, and we have a phone number, so if you um, do see a violation, you can call 508-862-4673 or visit the townofbarnstable.us slash parking division. And the folks behind that um, uh, area of the town are just fantastic. They are, and that is really their, their bailiwick, so okay. I would refer anyone to them. Right. And for yourself, um, folks can check out the Disability Commission on our website again at the town of Barnstable.us. But give me your feelings of being a member of mm -hmm. the disability. So if somebody's thinking about becoming a member of this commission, what can you tell them? What, what would you tell me if I wanted to be a member of this commission? Mm, okay. Think a minute. Yeah. I, I first started thinking about public service because my grandfather Frank Burse was very involved with public service, and I think I have a little bit of that in me. I grew up with him. He lived with us when I was a kid. And then I attended the Shape Your Cape Summit a couple of years ago when I heard Senator Sear speak about public service, and I just thought to myself, that's really the best way to learn about what's going on in my town. And when I was thinking about joining local government, I assessed which commissions would, which commissions interested, interested me the most based on my professional background. And I realized that because many of my clients have accessibility issues, that the Disability Commission was really the right place for me. Unfortunately, I qualified because I have extensive experience in a disability-related field, and uh, there was room there was a space for me. So the, I applied and, and then the commission ratified my appointment, as it were. Fantastic. You're doing great work and an thank important you. work here in the town of Barnes. But we thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Paula. Here's a look at the upcoming meetings for boards, commissions, and committees. Comments, suggestions, accolades, connect with us on Facebook and Instagram, email us, or send us an old-fashioned note by carrier pigeon. Channel 18 works for you. I'm Paula Hersey, and thank you for watching Barnstable today.